but I am so excited. Do you realize how hard it is to preach in empty seats? <laughs> that, was t- that was tough, brothers and sisters, I promise you that. And I, I want to uh, thank you for being faithful online. For those that are still watching online, we understand. But you, you, we cannot describe how it feels to be back in the house of God with God's people. And uh, as I saw faces that I have not been able to see for almost two months, uh, it was like seeing your family and seeing those that you love so dearly. Uh, just you're excited and and I'm excited, and, and I know uh, everything's going to be okay. I'm praying for wisdom, of course, for our governor. I'm praying that, uh, that we'll get some good news uh, tomorrow. Uh, but regardless of what he says, does not change the fact that God's on the throne. And it does not change the fact that you are still able to worship. And I do, I do want to remind you, the early church, uh, they didn't have a building Uh, They worshiped, they were effective in their homes, and I'm certainly not telling people to stay at home. I'm just encouraging those who are at home uh, that you can still worship and be the person you're supposed to be. Now, when the church house is available, I believe you ought to be there. Scripture teaches that. But if there's an anxiety reason, if there's a fear reason, or if your immune system is compromised and there's a health issue, we do not want you to feel guilty. We want you to be safe. We, We love you enough to say, do what's best for you. Uh, We don't have an ego thing going here. Our job is to do, it's just to minister to you the best way we possibly can. And and I want to take this this, this moment. Our music team, our sound guys, uh, we we built a brand new sound booth. We were able to reach a lot more people online. We've had to do some things differently. And you will not believe the amount of hours and the time that these guys have put in and these gals have put in to make it possible for, for what goes across the airways to be done done really well. They have to work really hard because they don't have to, uh, a whole lot to work with when they're working with me. And, and they're trying to, to make it the best they can be. I, they deserve an incredible round of applause from this crowd here this morning. They, they, they have worked so, so hard. Uh, I want to thank you also as we innovated and we created the PayPal, uh, our giving. Of course, it's not what it, it uh, normally is. But it has been enough to sustain the church. You've been faithful, and I hope the Lord has blessed you. Uh, I don't know of anybody in our church that has lost a job or been laid off. And if there is someone, please let us know. We won't attend to that. But we've not cut a salary. We've not docked anybody's pay. We've not shortchanged any missionary. Everything that we were supposed to do as a church, we've been able to accomplish by those that have been faithful. And uh, so if you weren't able to use a basket this morning, we found this works really well. Really, really well. We're going to do this. We've learned some things through this. When we come back, we're just going to set baskets out and trust that you'll come and give and do. And and nobody will rob the basket. Amen. It'll be good. Uh, It'll be good. So I got a good word for you today. I really do. Uh, I'm excited about it. Uh, You know, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited that you're excited. um, And... I believe the Lord's going to help us. I'm excited about we're going to get some good news tomorrow. And uh, hopefully we'll be back on Wednesday. Here's a precious thing. We got a group of little ones that are setting, you know, as we get prepared for worship, there's really nobody to watch them. You can't drop them off at a sitter. You can't do this. And I'm telling you, your kids are super hungry for social interaction. And it was precious to watch all these little ones. They gathered. They saw their friends and their, their, their buddies and their, 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 all, all their little game players, all of them with their little devices, all gathering in a huddle. And, um, and you look, I don't care what you do, you're not going to be able to social distance those little ones. You're just not. And praise God that he's got those protective angels over them. Amen. And, uh, but it was precious to see how special... Uh, church is to them how they wanted to get back at church. Jeremiah's been praying and thanking the Lord that he's able to at least come back to church a little bit at a time. And uh, I believe the Lord honors those prayers for those little ones. So right now, I just want to pray for you. There are some folks here today that I've been praying for. You don't know it, but I've been praying for you. You're here today, and I just want to thank the Lord personally. Uh, You know, I've been preaching for eight weeks online uh, to people that are not able to come. And uh, we're used to seeing people walk and make a decision for Christ. We really are. And that's the heartbeat of our ministry, as well as sharing the Word of God. 
uh, in a, an expository way. But to know that somebody has accepted Christ is an incredible blessing for us. And we've had as many as, I think, 1,800, 17, 1,800 views online. And uh, there is no doubt that there's been some lives changed. And I just want to thank the Lord for that. Uh, I, I personally, they have not called me. They've not responded. But I know that God has done some change in some lives. I know because some people I've been praying for, they're here. They're here. And because they're here, it tells me that God hears. And because they're here, it tells me that change still happens in people's lives. So I just want to thank the Lord this morning for you and for what God has done and for what God is going to do. I believe we're going to have some exciting times as we feel and feed on the, hungry, uh, the hunger that we all need here today. So let, let me pray for you right now. And uh, I love that song, God is good, isn't he? And he's been so good to all of us. So let us pray right now and invite the Lord to be with us. Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to come before the throne of grace where we find help in our time of need. And as they just saying, you are so good, so good to us. And Lord, I, I pray for every person here today. Lord, you know the ones specifically that I've been praying for. And God, I am thankful, so thankful that change is being implemented. I'm thankful for those that made a decision watching a service online, in their heart, privately. They didn't have to come forward and, and maybe feel that, that tinge of embarrassment. But, Father, I pray right now that they'd realize what a privilege it is to come before that throne of grace. And I pray they'd tell people that they accepted you as their Savior today. They'd not be embarrassed, they'd not be ashamed, but they'd be bold in their walk for you today. I ask you to bless this message. I ask you to anoint me to take away all distractions. Open our hearts and minds here this morning as we learn how to navigate this journey called life. It can be difficult sometimes. We can be in the wilderness sometimes. We can be in bitterness sometimes. But Father, I'm glad you have a way and that you're always there. So bless what we're going to do today. I'm going to give you praise. I'm going to give you glory I'm going to give you all the honor that is due you, and it's for Jesus' sake that we do this. And in his name we ask these things, amen and amen. And all of God's people said, amen. amen. Look, I'm going to give you a little clip. I'm going to give you a little clip to get you jump started. Uh, you can take your Bibles, turn to Exodus chapter number 15. I'm going to give you some good advice uh, for the Christian life here this morning. For the Christian life. Let me ask you this. Through this thing... Bring the lights back up just a little bit, just for a second. Because I, I want people to look around, and I want you to be honest. Bring them up just a little bit. Through this seven or eight weeks uh, that we've been apart and this virus thing, I think it's been going on a whole lot longer than we knew about. But through this period of time, let me ask you this. Has God done something for you in your life? Have you renewed some relationship with the Lord? Have you gotten back to a place where you, where you knew you needed to be? And, and, and just let me say, has he been good to you? If he has, raise your hand and let me see it here this morning. Put your hand up. God bless you, man. All over the building. Now look around. Look around. All over this building, the Lord has been speaking and working through the times that we've been apart. Amen. And he's, he's bringing us all to a place where it can be better. Through the times of difficulty, God does the greatest work. And it's not because... That he says, well, I'm going to put on my Superman cape. It's because we become so acutely aware that we need him. And that we give attention to him through the times of difficulty. And watch this little clip. Then I'm going to come back. We're going to come out of Exodus 15. And I'm going to give you some good advice for the Christian life. And it's, it's not, you, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure this one out. Amen. Uh, it, it, it's very practical, but I promise you it'll make a difference in your life if you listen to what I say here this morning. I'll be back in about two minutes.
Now, I did that. You're, you can give it a clap, do whatever you feel you need to do. Church is still the same, but yet it's a little awkward. We don't know what to do quite right now. I got a mask on. I couldn't believe that some people are trying to put this thing on and preach. Ain't going to happen here. Uh, I mean, look, I'll just move back. I've got my six feet. If I spit, I'll take a step back before I spit. Amen. Uh, but, but I keep it in my pocket. Some people are a little uncomfortable, uh, and, and, you, and you have to put it. I think that's good discretion, but that's not how we're used to doing business. I'm not used to fist bumping uh, as a general purpose. Now, uh, let me give you something that I like to do. I love the movie Gladiator. You know, I remember years ago, Russell Crowe was in it. It's one of my favorite, you know, Maximus, Decimus, Meridius, you know, general to the legions of the north, uh, general to the true uh, emperor of Rome. I, I know it. I love it. I love it. I mean, it's a man's film, but I love it. And one of the things they do in that film that the legions of Rome did, those that had honor, they'd take their fist and make a little symbol, and they put it across their heart like this, and it meant strength and honor. Strength and honor. So if I do that to you, I'm saying strength and honor to you and strength and honor to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But this is what I really want to do. I really want to get my hug or I want to shake somebody's hand. or I, want, I mean, because that's, that, that's what fuels us. It's a little different. It's a little odd. We're not sure. Uh, do they want to sit close? Do they want to do this? What do you do? Uh, so you take the same, you know, I see people elbow bumping. That's something brand new. I even seen some, I think Dawn started where they're doing it with their leg. Amen. It, it's different. It is different. It has been different the first few weeks. We didn't know whether to have an altar call because people would come forward. And how are you going to really pray with somebody six feet apart? I'm saying, I'm shucking that. You need prayer, I'm going to pray with you. Amen. I can put a mask on. I can do whatever you But if you really need prayer, I'll pray with you. I'm not scared. I'm covered by the blood. Amen. Now, I'm not being silly, and I'm not being stupid, and I'm not being facetious, but I don't think anybody here has the virus. I think everybody here knows what protocols to practice, and we got good wisdom, and we'll do it. But look, at the end of the service, if you need to come to this altar and pray, come and pray. I think we need to get back to a sense of being normal, but yet still use wisdom. Uh, amen? But it, because it's who we are. We're having to be people that's not us right now. We're not made to be locked up in a house. We, we're, we're made to live, breathe, and move in Him. Okay, so I want to give you some things here this morning that will help you. In Exodus chapter number 15, we find a unique story. It's, it's, it's a, a portion of Scripture where the children of Israel have been in bondage for 400 years uh, by Egypt. Now, it was part of a divine plan. Don't, don't I mean, understand how all of this worked. Uh, Joseph was in Egypt. Joseph had an elevated position, uh, brought his people out of famine. The nation was actually saved by going into Egypt uh, under the time of Joseph. And they ended up staying there because they, they became comfortable with their uncomfortableness. They became comfortable with their uncomfortableness. Even though they were uncomfortable being there, they were comfortable being there. They had plenty to eat. They were under bondage, but they had plenty to eat, and they prospered. They prospered so much, there were more Israelites than there were Egyptians at this particular place. But they became very comfortable. But yet, God heard their cry because of their bondage, and he sends a deliverer named Moses. Now, they have left Egypt in chapter number 15. They have just crossed the Red Sea. How many of you believe the Red Sea story? Let me see your hand. Amen. I do. I believe the Red Sea. I believe God parted the waters. I believe Moses lifted up the rod and said, Behold the salvation of the Lord. The waters rolled back. They went across and they got the other side. Uh, God said, Let your rod down. And what happened? The waters came and engulfed all of Pharaoh. Even, even your, your geologists and all the people that discover stuff, they looked in the Red Sea. They found wheels of chariots and all this kind of stuff. But that's not what I'm trying to teach on this morning. Uh, not the validity of that. But God did a great thing to the children of Israel. He showed himself. He sent the ten plagues. He, he had the door, uh, the blood put over the doorpost and the lintel to establish the Passover as the death angel came through. He's brought them out of bondage, parted the Red Sea. They've come across. And in chapter 15, they have a song now. Israel has a song. Let me just tell you, God is going to get us through the wilderness. And we, we should have a song this morning. 
We should. We should have a song. First thing I want you to write down here this morning as I'm kind of setting the stage for this, uh, the Red Sea crossing, the 400 years of bondage, it is important It is important that you remember what God has done for you in your yesterdays. When you remember what God has done for you in your yesterdays, it makes your todays and your tomorrows better. Because the scripture says he will never leave us nor forsake us. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he does not change. If God was gracious to you in your yesterdays, God is going to be gracious to you in your days. And and your two days and your tomorrows. And it's good that we remember. And they started remembering. And it says in chapter 15, verse number 1. And Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord. And spoke saying, I will sing to the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and its rider has thrown thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. He is my God. I will praise him. My father's God and I will exalt him. Uh, And then it goes on. And it goes on literally for 20. 21 verses, them singing a song. Chorus after chorus. This is actually a psalm. In the Hebrew, that means it's a song. It's the first recorded song by the children of Israel and Moses. And it's a contagious thing when we start to celebrate. They had remembered what God had done. So I want you to write down the word celebrate. Celebrate is important. Because, see, we've been, we've been in, in, in a, a period where our days felt like there was nothing to really celebrate. How many of you, now you've got to be honest with me here, how many of you would admit that we might have become a little complacent and just a little bit lazy in our staying at home? Can I get an amen? We get a little bit lazy. How many of you have taken a nap that you didn't normally take through this time? Amen? Can I, no, just say amen. It's better. They can't see you online. They can only see me, so it's okay. But they can hear you. How many of you have been a little bit lazy at home? Say amen. How many of you have got a lot of projects at home done that you have been putting off for years, but finally you did them this time? Not too many, but a few. But you have some things to celebrate when we remember God's past. And here's the thing. We, we weren't having anything good. And if you watch the news all day and that's all that you watch, and people tend to gravitate to that, hoping for good news and all you hear is bad news, you tend not to celebrate. Because all you hear is bad stuff. Amen? You're doing pickup. How many of you done? Uh, 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 you call and get an order and you go through drive through and pick it up? Right? Just say Amen. How many of you are cooking more than you ever thought you'd ever cook? <laughs> Amen? Yeah, I understand all that. But see, you have some things to celebrate. Uh, I have thought about, and I've even made the statement, I'm not sure if the church is going to be like it once was because people have become complacent. I'm going to say this. If you're at home, don't be complacent. Don't, don't say, this is my new norm. This is just a bump in the road. Things are going to be back to normal. Amen? The proof of it is that for those that are here right now, it's going to be back the way that it's supposed to be here this morning. So you have some things to celebrate. God's done some good things through this time. I could point a few out. There are some people that have made the pledge to get married through this time. There, there, there's been some good things. There have been some that have accepted Christ through this time. There has been some things through this time that God has renewed a right spirit in people as they started to focus on their need for Him because they were comfortable with their uncomfortableness and they decided to make some things right in their life. There are some things to celebrate, folks, and it's important. They sang, Moses and the children of Israel, they sang a song because they, they were delivered they understood it and they had many things to celebrate and let, let me just say this if you're looking for uh for more excuses not to come and worship then life is overtaking you instead of you overtaking life you should be running life and not life running you you understand that you have the holy spirit and you you get to control what you do in this life amen Life doesn't get to control you. You get control of that. You say, well, you don't understand my circumstances. Grab hold of the circumstance. God is bigger than the circumstance. Grab hold to it, see? And, and, and they were delivered. They had many things to celebrate. Many things. We have many things to celebrate. They were no longer slaves. Their enemies had been destroyed. Listen to me. I am glad I am no longer a slave and in bondage to sin. 
I am glad I do not have to bow down to Satan that no matter what, he can't have me. I, I'm glad that no matter how hard he tries, I don't have to go to hell. Amen? I am glad that I have a father that sits on the throne that controls everything. Amen? I'm glad all authority has been given to Jesus and that his name even the, the demons flee from. He calms the sea. He steals the wind. He controls everything that goes on. I have multiple things to celebrate, uh, celebrate about. And they were on their way to the promised land. And whether you believe it or not, you're on your way to the promised land. You're just passing through here. All we need in this life is a little bit of help to get us to the promised land. The death angel passed over them and they were alive. If you've been born again here this morning, the death angel has passed over you. You've got something to celebrate. You know, if, they, if the virus got us, now let, let, let me just say this. I, I like to deal in realistic terms, okay? A lot of people are worried about the virus and they stay cooped up and they stay cooped up and they stay away from church and they stay away from this and they stay away from that. Let me tell you something. Sin is more dangerous than the coronavirus. The wages of sin is death. And you say, well, not everybody, you know, the, the coronavirus people can die. I understand that. But see, when your sin debt has been paid and you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, death doesn't win. If you don't know Christ and you die of the coronavirus, death wins. What's more important? What's more important is that we worship God and we seek God and we turn to God and we have our sins forgiven. Amen? And then, so if, if the virus gets something, and look, life is precious, and I don't want anybody to die from the virus, but I certainly, every week, I don't want anybody to die because of their sins either. I want them to know Christ. I, and you got something to celebrate. And see, here's the provision. God loved you so much, he sent his son to die for you, and it doesn't matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, no matter how sorry a dog you've been, and boy, there's been some sorry dogs, because I used to run with a pack of sorry dogs. We were all sorry in my pack and in my circle, amen. So did you, amen. Sorry, 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 did some bad, sorry things, and it doesn't matter what you've done, you can't be bad enough for God to turn you away. Now, that'll make an Episcopalian shout, Amen. No matter how bad I've been, God said, I'll take you. I'll take every straggler. I'll take every sinner out there. I'll take the, the one who calls himself a wretched sinner, uh, the worst sinner, the chief of sinners. God said, I'll take them all because, see, what I got, what I got will change who they are. And, boy, you got something to celebrate here today. Amen. They had something to celebrate. See, we, we're delivered. We're no longer slaves to sin. Uh, we're, we, 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 we're all on our way to the promised land that know Christ. And, and we have life in Jesus. And, see, if you've lost your song today, because, see, if you have a song, it says they sang a song. They sang a song. If, if you've lost your song of serving the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to get your song back. And there's something incredible about celebration. Moses and the people started singing, and his sister Miriam goes and grabs a tambourine and gets her a bunch of ladies, if you read at the end of uh, verses 20, 21, and, and they start, uh, not only are they singing, they're dancing. They're dancing. They just left bondage, crossed the Red Sea, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, they break out in a song and a dance, and they're just praising God for all that he's done. You know, there's not a better time to praise God than right now through this virus. We're not done. We're not done, but the world is going to be better. We're going to learn more, and we're going to be better able to be suited to fight anything that comes our way. And let me let you in on a little secret. None of this is by accident. I believe God's setting the table for some futuristic things. You better watch, and you better learn. You better be aware of what's going on. God's making us more aware that we need him even more. So I just say celebrate is a good word, amen? They celebrated, they had a song, and, and see, they chose to count their blessings because it is a choice. Moses led them in giving glory to God. I'm doing my best to tell you that God's still on the throne. I'm doing my best to tell you that God loves you. I'm telling you that, 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 that God will not turn you away. Why in the world would you want to live outside the protective parameters of God is beyond the way that I can think and comprehend. I want to live under his blessing, his anointing, his protection, his provision, his, his goodness, his mercy, his joy. I, I, want to, I want to know that God's got my back. Amen? And see, when you're outside the will of God, you don't, you, you're never sure 
of where you stand with God because the fellowship is broken. Not the love, but the fellowship. I just say, let's get right with God. Let's celebrate. Moses reminded them that the Lord was their strength. Nehemiah 8.10 says, the, 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 the Lord is my strength, and it becomes my joy. It becomes my joy. What do we have to celebrate? Well, there was a virus called sin, and it attacked every one of us. And without God providing a way and sending a, a, a vaccine for that thing, and that vaccine was when Jesus shed his blood on Calvary for us. But that virus had us all. Everybody in here is terminal. Every one of you going to die. Scripture says it's appointed unto man once to die, and after this the judgment. I promise you, if you had the coronavirus, you'd be wanting an antidote. You'd be wanting some medication. And if you don't know Christ today, you should be crying out, I want the blood of Jesus to cure me from that sin virus. Amen? Because the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ our Lord. And I promise you, that's what we have to celebrate. Our sins have been forgiven. We are justified and on our way to heaven. You know what that word justified literally means? It comes from two words where we get the word just and tried. It was we were justly tried by being measured to what Christ did for us. God looks at us as what we've done with Christ, and he said justly tried, so thus we become justified when we've trusted in Christ. So we get what's called justification. In other words, God says you've been tried, and you've been found not guilty because you've been found in Christ. Amen? To as many that are in Christ have new life. Amen? Because, see, we're condemned already, the Scripture says. So we have that to celebrate, and we have God's promises to be with us on the journey. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6, he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Aren't you glad that God's with you through this journey? You might have forgot about it in the last six or seven weeks because it's been so overwhelming that things look bleak, they look dark, they things are all of this. But I promise you, if you go back and look at what's happened to you, there are some things that you can celebrate that's happened in these last six or eight weeks. Now, I know we're doing things differently. So let me give you a second word here as, as we move on. You'll flip on to verse 22 of this. and verses 20 to 25, we find something else. God's done all this miraculous stuff. He's done everything. They're singing a song. They've got the song. And all of a sudden, they need water. And the water they go to, gets it's bitter. It's brackish. They come from the Red Sea. Any fresh water where they're at has been kind of tied into the sea. And the sea comes in, tide comes in, and all the water is brackish. You know what brackish water is? It's salty. It's not, you can't drink it. You can't use it to cook with. You can't do anything. And, and all of a sudden, they start freaking out again. Sounds like a bunch of church people I know. They celebrate. They celebrate how good God is. First problem comes along. They start to... Freak out just a little bit. Amen? Look in verse 22. It says this. Now remember, they've been singing. Miriam's been dancing. She's been playing her tambourine. She's a prophetess. They've been talking about how good God is. And all of a sudden, they run into a little bit of a difficulty. And they say, where's God? Where's God? This is good. Watch. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. And when they went out of the wilderness to Shur, and there they went three days into the wilderness, found no water. Now when they came to Myra, they could not drink the waters of Myra, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of the place was called Myra. How about that? And the people complained against Moses, crying, What shall we drink? And he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. And when he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. See, sometimes in the Christian life, you got to innovate I bet Moses had never thrown a tree into the water before. And I bet he never thought that that tree would make a difference. Now, there's some symbolism here because the tree is going to make a difference for us all. The tree is going to make a difference when life gets bitter. You would say, what tree are you talking about? I'm talking about the cross. The tree is going to make a difference. And it made the water sweet. See, problems will be encountered on the journey that we're on in this Christian life. And they, they ran out of water. And when they found water, it was bitter. Here we are, we're celebrating, and then all of a sudden, we have to innovate. I'll be honest, man, the, the, the guys will tell you, I, I was struggling. I still struggle sometimes. For 40 years, I have done nothing but preach the gospel. For 40 years, I've been looking at people in seats sharing the Word of God. And when you come to a place and all of a sudden, there's nobody to preach to. I felt like Noah. 
He preached for 120 years and didn't have a single convert. It was awful. But you say, well, it came across good online. I was doing the very best I could, and maybe God anointed it. But in my spirit, my spirit was low. It was low. And I realized we got to innovate. We got to innovate. Our camera and our equipment wasn't what it needed to be because that had never been the emphasis of our ministry. Our, the emphasis of our ministry was putting, let me just say this as kindly as I know how, behinds in the seats. We wanted people in the house of God. That's where we put our emphasis. And all of a sudden, that's taken away. So do we give up and throw up our hands? No. We had a group of, of dedicated young men that said, we're going to innovate. We're going to make this better than it's ever been. And I'm telling you, man, Sean and Justin and Charles and Bill and, and Mark and all the guys. And, and I mean, everybody that worked on this, uh, from the musicians, everybody had an effort trying to make it better. We had to innovate. We never had PayPal before. A lot of old-fashioned people didn't want to do PayPal. But PayPal has carried us through. Why? Because we had to innovate. We had to innovate. I have never done a Wednesday service sitting on my back porch. And I forgot to turn the pool thing off, and it was, had the waterfall running. And people said, man, that's, I had more questions about who built my pool than the sermon. Amen. But we had to innovate. We had to innovate. Sometimes in life, you've got to change what you used to do to get you out of the wilderness. And their place was bitter. And if your place is bitter right now, understand the tree can make a difference. They put the tree in and the waters were sweet. That'll shut you up. You're drinking brackish water and all of a sudden you try God and you say, boy, this is sweet. What's that old song? It gets sweeter as the days go by. Oh, it gets sweeter. Oh, man. I mean, I love that, that thing because, see, once the closer you walk with God, the sweeter the journey is. Now, some of you say, I'm not sure about this. I'm just starting my journey. Let me just get a a, a, a a testament from everybody in here for all of those that doubt and for all of us that know the journey is sweeter every day that we walk with Jesus it gets better every day give give Jesus a hearty amen for it being sweeter amen, amen. We're, we're all testifying that it does get sweeter but you're going to get in the wilderness there'll be some days of bitterness and see people they ran out of water when they found it was bitter and see sometimes bitter experiences make bitter people and they begin to complain instead of innovate if something's not right in your life today make some changes and innovate celebrate innovate God had to innovate in a solution to the water problem Moses had never done that I've never done what we had to do I never preached to empty seats Man, it was weird. I'd be done. I didn't know how to end it. I didn't know how to leave the building. I didn't know how to do what I did. I didn't, I didn't know if what we did was any good. But then we started seeing people watching and sharing and watching and sharing. We were reaching more people online than we were reaching in the seats. Now look, if you're watching online, this is just, you guys just park for a minute. If you're watching online, we need you in the seats. It's a whole lot better in the seats. Can I get an amen, folks? Yeah. Amen. But in the meantime, innovate. Change some things. You don't like where your life's headed? Make some changes, positive changes. Moses was to throw the tree in the water and make it sweet. And this was a new approach. But I promise you, it worked. And it worked. And see, they, 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 they forgot where they came from. They forgot all the things. And they started to complain a little bit. And that's the way we are. So we ought to innovate in our Christian life and problem solving and we don't have the answers that's when God does his greatest work when we don't have the answers and we say God what do I do what do I do Phyllis tell you man I was struggling with a little bit of a I, it wasn't anxiety I've never been anxious about the virus thing not at all I've been a little depressed because I've been worried about the church I'll be honest I've been worried if some of you were ever going to come back hmm because, see, you were in a place that you weren't sure that it would be easy because we're creatures of habit. You, come, you don't come for eight weeks. All of a sudden, that becomes the new habit. Everybody know what I'm saying? You got some friends. You're going to find it's going to be hard to get them back. 
Well, I, I just stay home. This, y'all, y'all have innovated so well, and you do it so well online. We'll just stay home. We kind of like this. Listen to me. If you're a believer, if you're a believer, you're supposed to assemble and worship. You're supposed to assemble and worship. And listen to me. We're just starting here. I can't wait to get back on Wednesday if we start teaching. I can't wait until the little children get, go back to children's church. I can't wait till Omar's crew is full again on Wednesday. He's been running a good number, but it ain't like it's normal. We, and it's going to be hard. We all have to work to make it better, and we've got to innovate. See, our innovation should always, always been root, be rooted in inspiration and the Word of God. You say, how do you do all this? Well, I, you know, I don't have all the answers, but I do know this. The Bible says if we lack wisdom, let us ask of God, and He'll give it to us liberally. Let's all, with our own heart, let's say, let's make this better than what it was eight weeks ago. We've had a time of thinking and a time of doing things better. We, we, we can celebrate. We've got, we, we've got much to celebrate about. Let's innovate to make it better. Let's make some of the bitterness go away by bringing some positive things into our life. Let me give you the third thing. If you're still with me, now say amen. Hey, here's one thing that many of you have learned. I can preach a shorter message. That first week, people said, you done? Yeah, I, I had to learn how to manage that because I know sitting at home, you're not going to sit there for a real long period of time, too many distractions. So we've got to celebrate, we've got to innovate. Everybody say celebrate. celebrate. Innovate. innovate. Third thing, dedicate. Ooh. Dedicate, verses 26 and 27. This is pretty good. 26, and he tested them. As a matter of fact, it says this, uh, verse 25, He cried out to the Lord, this is Moses, and the Lord showed him a tree, and we cast, the, cast it into the waters, the waters made sweet. And he made a statute and an ordinance for them. And there he tested them and said, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep his statutes, I will put none of these diseases on you that I brought on the Egyptians. What a good word for today. I will put none of these diseases on you that I put on the Egyptians. Celebrate. Innovate. Put the tree in the waters and make it sweeter. Put the cross in your life. And he says, dedicate. Do all that I've commanded. Follow me. Listen to my word. He, I mean, that's really what he said. He said, do all this. He called the people to a new dedication in verse 26. They had never heard this. Moses took the opportunity after the innovation and said, you really want God to bless you? Be dedicated to the things that God has for us. If you just half do the Christian life, you're just going to have half of the Christian life. If you dedicate to the Christian life, you're going to find that life truly is better and the blessings of God are going to be profound in your life profound you'll get your heart's desire you'll get your wishes your dreams will come true listen to me you'll get the dream marriage you always wished you'd had you'll get kids that turn out right you'll get a home where there's peace and harmony am i telling you the truth You'll have a husband and wife that don't fight all the time. They'll come together in such love as they understand and learn how that we're supposed to love our wives and we're supposed to run our homes and God will bless us beyond measure. Amen? It'll be, it'll be, everything will be better when you learn how to dedicate. Moses called his people to a new dedication. He said, diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord. Diligently hearken. Now I have a... a, a when I was young in life, I joined the military. I joined a, 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 a kind of elite group of military people. And when I got there, they asked for a volunteer who wanted to go learn martial arts so that you could teach other soldiers self-defense and hand-to-hand combat and things like that. So I, my hand went up. I was young. I was athletic. I went, and I learned to teach martial arts. Listen, you, you're never going to achieve anything good unless you dedicate to it. I couldn't teach those guys how to put their life on the line if I wasn't dedicated to it. I mean, it took hours and hours and hours and hours of training. I mean, just to learn a certain kick or a certain move, a certain this, because it was important that I taught them the correct way because when they got into combat, that's what they were to use. Had to dedicate. When God called me, I can't tell you the hours that I have put in studying the Word of God. 
You go in my office, it's full of books. And I know for you young people, you use the internet, you got more than I got. But for me, it was books. Those books have things highlighted, underlined, scored. And I got just as many books at home because I have dedicated my life to studying the Word of God. That's why I am very confident about what we teach you. Not because I'm real smart, because I've been dedicated to the cause of sharing the Word of God and rightly dividing the Word of Truth so that you can be made whole when you come to find out things from God. See, if you want to be a dedicated person in this life serving God, you can't half do it. You can't. You've got to put your whole heart in it. You've got to commit to it. He says, diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord and do which is right in his sight. Give ear to his commandments and keep all of his statutes. See, it's one thing to learn or to hear the word of God. It's another thing to practice it. See, our orthodoxy, our orthodoxy and our orthoproxy are two different things. Our orthoproxy becomes what we practice. Our orthodoxy becomes what we learn. But if our practice doesn't heed to what we've learned, then it's improper. You have to do what you know is right. You can't do contrary to that. And he, you got to dedicate. Healing and blessings will follow dedication. He'll heal your home. He'll heal your marriage. He'll heal your finances. He'll heal you spiritually. He'll give you new life in Christ Jesus. Because, see, you've, you've celebrated. Then there's innovated. You've made changes in your life. You've done things that you've never done before. And if you're a new believer here, this is all new for you. You're not used to getting up on Sunday and getting ready for church and coming and doing. You're used to going to the lake, eating a nice breakfast, doing this, doing that. This is a whole new ball game. And then on Wednesday to come back, a whole new ball game. To write a check for a tithe or an offering, a whole new ball game. To give up some time to serve the Lord or to encourage someone else. It's a whole new ball game. But that's innovation. Remember, when the waters are bitter, they're made sweet by the tree. And if the cross has been applied in your life, you'll, you'll love serving the Lord. You will. You will. Because one day you're going to hear, well done, not well said. Well done. And all of these, see, we cannot expect God's blessings apart from full dedication. Look, if I didn't put the time in, Phyllis said, you got your message ready? Baby, I always have my message ready. You know that? Oh, she says, you know what I mean. Have you really spent time in doing it? I said, oh, yeah, I have. I said, and it's a good message. You say, you bragging on your own message? I don't normally do that. I just hope, but, I, but look, when you put the time in, you know it's going to be good. It might not be good for you, but it's been good for me. Because, see, the first person I have to preach to is me. The first person that gets to hear the message is me. Katie said, Dad, I know it's going to be good. I typed it. She said, man, it was good when I was typing it. She said, I was sitting there thinking, boy, this is good. This is good. But, see, it doesn't mean a thing if we don't apply it. Amen? So we have to understand healing and blessings follow. And we can't expect God's blessings apart from our full dedication. So we have... Celebration. Everybody say celebrate. celebrate. Innovation. Say innovate. innovate. Dedicate. We have dedication. Don't, don't you see? Celebrate. Make changes in our life. And all of a sudden we become dedicated. Don't you know that will lead you to a fourth thing? You know what that fourth thing is? Elevate. 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 Elevation is good. I'm not going to stay where I am today. I'm going to be elevated. I'm going to be elevated. Celebration, innovation, dedication always brings elevation. In other words, you will see yourself spiritually maturing. You will see your faith grow beyond measure. Jesus said if you've got a little faith, you can speak to a mountain in your life and the mountain will be removed. Now, he's not talking about looking at a physical mountain and trying to move that. But the things, the obstacles in your life, you'll be able to speak to them because you have celebrated, you've innovated, you are dedicated, and you've learned the principles. And now you'll be able to elevate. And when problems come, you'll be able to go over the problems. You'll be able to go over the problems. Let me give you some things that I wrote down on my elevation, my way of thinking. Your thinking, if it's wrong, will mess you up. As a person thinks in his heart, so is he. If you think you're not worthy, you're going to act like you're not worthy. 
If you think God doesn't love you, you're going to go around and eventually you're not going to claim the promises of God. You're going to say, he doesn't love me anyway. I'm just going to go back to my old ways. You've got to change the way you think. When you celebrate, innovate, and dedicate, your thinking is elevated. Regardless of what opinion you have of yourself, you cannot override what God says about you. And he says, you're beautifully and wonderfully made. And he says, you're my child. And I love you. And I have a plan for you. And it's good. If you're burdened, cast your care on me. Because why? I care for you. If you're downtrodden, let me give you my joy that's unspeakable and full of glory. If you need something today, I'll supply all of your need according to my riches and glory. Amen? Because I own it all. If you feel that you're downtrodden and forsaken, he says, I'll never leave you nor what? Forsake you. See, you've got to change the way you think. And I want to elevate my way of thinking. I'm not going to be influenced by the world's negative trash. And I promise you, I promise you, and I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it because it's going online, I don't believe none of them anymore that's on the news. I don't, I don't believe none of them. I, I just don't believe the way they think. It makes us think that God's not on the throne. It, it makes us think the promises of God are not true. Satan is doing everything he can to jack with our mind. And I'm going to talk about that next week, about how we can win over this thing, okay? But you, you've got to come hear this. It's going to be good. I've got to change my way of thinking, not influenced by the world's negative trash. And Satan needs to get out of my ear and your ear. You say, Satan ain't in my ear. Oh, you're already fooled, man. He's already, he's already smacked you around then. He's so subtle you don't know. You, you, you understand this world operates under the dominion of the prince and power of the air. He's, he's, he's walking to and fro, seeking whom he may, he may devour. You understand that? He has great dominion, and this, this is his. He ain't in hell. He's messing with you all the time. He's messing with you. So we need to get him out of our ear and get God in our ear. Elevate. Just say, man, I ain't listening to that junk. That's of the enemy. That's a lie of the devil. Amen? Weak testimonies and life practices of other people, I need to watch because if I'm not careful, I'll watch their weak testimony and their life practice, and you know what it'll do? It'll pull me down. Because I'm dumb enough to expect people to do what's right. Amen? I'm dumb enough to expect people to believe the book. I'm dumb enough when somebody gets saved, I'm dumb enough to believe that they ought to have a changed life. That the old things have passed away, and behold, now all things have become new. It's, it's, I mean, they're not what it says. Therefore, if anyone's in Christ, the old things passed away. I'm dumb enough to believe they ought to be changed. And I'm, I'm also weak enough to know when I don't see that in their life, it drags me down. You say, does my testimony really matter? Do I really make a difference? You certainly do because other people are watching. You are the only Bible that some people will read. So I want to elevate to where weak testimonies and life practices of other people don't pull me down. If they don't do right, bless God. Bless God. I'm going to use it motivation for me to be even better. And it's not that I'm good. There's none good, no, not one. But I'm not going to give in to the devil and, and, and by God's help... And let that drag me down. Because I'm going to elevate. Because I've celebrated. I've made changes in my life. And I've been dedicated to the word of God. And I have seen the blessings that he's brought. I, I'm mindful of all that he's ever done. And he doesn't change. I'm his child. And I'm going to elevate to the position where God wants me to be. The scripture says that I has not seen. Ear is not heard. The things that God has prepared for his people. I have not seen the best that God can do for me. Because God's not finished with me yet. Tomorrow will be better than today if my outlook is right. You can't sing the song, it gets sweeter as the days go by, if you don't believe that. You have to elevate. You have to elevate and weak testimonies and life practices, they'll pull you down. And, and, and what we do, what we, and when we see them, we become bitter again. 
What we need to do is to elevate in such a way that when we see them not doing what they need to do, that we instantly start having compassion and praying for them the way that Jesus did. He was elevated. And when he looked, he had compassion on them instead of judgment. See, when you're pulled down by it, you instantly want to retaliate back with negative stuff. But when God elevates you, you want to do what's right, don't you? Pray and love the way that you realize. See, I, I need to realize my privilege. A special, here's the definition of privilege. Special right advantage, immunity granted, or available only to a certain or particular group of people. I need to realize my privilege. You, you understand? The promises of God are only for God's people. It's a privilege. 6,000 plus promises are available for you. My privilege of being a child of God is I fall under the blanket and the providential hand of God. That's elevation, folks, that I start realizing my privilege. I have access to the throne of grace. I have access to God. There's only one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Jesus gave me the access to the throne of God. And see, it's for believers. I'm a child of God. God's provided the provision for me. See, King David tells this testimony. He set a table prepared for me. What a privilege. God has set a table prepared for you. Your life might have been a wreck two months ago, but let me tell you, if you come to Christ, I promise you, the table's prepared for you. Table's prepared for you. It's good. He's my burden bearer. What a privilege. When I get all of these burdens, he said, cast them, cast your care on me because I care for you. I care for you. And see, as my healer, spiritually and physically, I have access to him. I could go on all day about the privileges that I have when I realize my elevation brings me to a place of privilege. When I pray, he hears and he answers. That's why some of you I said I've been praying for. That's why some that I was hoping would get saved, they got saved. I didn't know them by name, but I know there's some people out of, look, you're, you're, you're absolutely foolish if you think 1,700 people watching that somebody didn't accept Christ. The power of God's too powerful for that. The word never goes out void. It goes where the Holy Spirit meant for it to go. And I don't need to know, I just need to keep doing I need to elevate and keep doing. See, I realize God's blessings. They're all around us. And see, when I elevate, I become more vocal. I become vocal in acknowledgement of them. I become thankful because I've celebrated. I innovated. I, 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 I was dedicated. And then the elevation starts to come. I want to close with, if you read, and it's funny how God's people are. That's why I firmly believe that God has us to come to the house of worship on a weekly basis. Because it didn't take but a couple of weeks and our thinking screwed up. Can I get an amen? Really, it doesn't. It doesn't take but a little bit of time and we start reverting back. Eight weeks, some of us thought God had just forsaken us all. This virus is going to kill the whole world and we're all going to die with a plague. Amen? And I'm certainly not taking lightly of any deaths that have been lost or anything like that. It's, 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 it's serious and all those things, but, but I am thankful for all the people that didn't get it and all the people that have been healed. Amen? In Exodus 17, we find old habits become hard to break. They cry out, where are you, God? They need water again. <laughs> the tree had already been applied, and they moved on. They're, they're moving on toward the promised land and, 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 and to get ready to go conquer some more lands. And where are you, God? And they needed water again. Do you really care for us? Of course, he does. He tells Moses, just strike the rock and water will come forth from a rock. Innovation again. Doing ministry a different way. And the same is true for your situation. If it's come to a desperate point, I want to just say, trust him. He never fails. See his incredible power and provision. Stop the old habit of grumbling all the time and practice celebration, innovation, dedication, and elevation. And every time something went wrong, they started grumbling again. Grumbling doesn't get anything done. It does not. Stop the old habit of grumbling. Trust him and be confident in his care for you. I'm going to ask Kenny if he would to come. I'm going to ask you right now. We haven't done this since we've been able to assemble. But I'm going to ask you right now to search your heart and say, Look, I need to practice the celebration 
the innovation, the dedication, and the elevation in my life. I need to practice it because I want the blessing of God. I want, I want something new and fresh, and I want to start all over in my Christian walk. I want, I want it to be so different after these eight weeks of this virus. I want to mark it in my life diary that when we came back, everything was different. And it was different in a good way. So I'm going to ask you to stand right now. I'm going to ask you to get out of your comfort zone too. I'm going to ask you to come to the altar if the Lord has spoken to you about making a difference now. Making a change in your life. For once, for once, truly, an opportunity to be different. For once, an opportunity to be the person you've always wanted to be. Be the husband you've wanted to be. Amen. I had a young person come to the altar. The altar is open for you. Why don't you come? Hey, Jonathan, I've been praying for you. You didn't know that, probably. Now, I'm not meaning to embarrass you, but you've been heavy on my heart. And I have, I have heard good things, my little brother. And those tears, the Bible says, that when we shed those tears of joy, we're going to reap the goodness of God. Amen. I am so proud of you today, buddy. This is different, I know. This ain't like the old Jonathan. This is like a new Jonathan. Let me take your hand, buddy. Let me just say thank you so much. Be dedicated this time. Make the change. The Lord's going to bless you for it. Amen. Hey, Wesley, are you still in here? Come here, Wes. I've learned this. There's nothing better than when a brother, I'm talking about a blood brother, prays for his brother. I want you to pray for your brother. That's what the scripture says. Am I my brother's keeper? Yes, you are. Yes, we all are. Amen. This is so good. Your dad's going to be so proud. And I know I wish, he wish he was here. I am proud. This is one of the young men I've been praying for for these eight weeks. Don, I know you're happy, girl. She's been praying for you too, man. Maybe you're like him. You need a change in your life. The altar's open for you. Come. Don't be afraid. We'll spread out. We'll get on the seats this way celebrate innovate dedicate and I promise you God will bring you to this place of elevation that you'll find such joy and happiness Heavenly Father I pray for every person in this place I pray for those that might need you as Savior I pray for those that need just a, a bump in their Christian walk a fresh start, a new opportunity, a, a new time to do things differently. And Father, I pray as they turn the page, it'll be a good page. It'll be a new chapter in their life. It'll be a new door they go through, a new window of opportunity, a new song in their heart. Give them the song like the children of Israel had, remembering how good you are. Father, I pray that you'd speak to every heart. I pray for every worker every teacher, every staff person, that their strength would be renewed and our joy is found in your strength. We thank you for today. My heart has been encouraged. We thank you for what you've done today. We thank you for the message today. Your word, how clear it was to us. So, Father, I pray for every person in this building. I pray for my brothers and sisters online that they'll be eager to come back and with an excitement, that will make a difference for everyone here. It's contagious, our celebration. We thank you for what you've done and what you're doing and what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Give the Lord a hand clap offering here this morning. Amen.